Appreciate the husky voice. The husky voice. <laughs> well, there's a reason for husky voice. Why have I got a husky voice, Steve? Because you misbehave yourself. You've done too much, <laughs> and after the operation, now you've got bronchitis. <coughs> <coughs> well, it's it's actually... peaceful for me, apart from at night time. <coughs> <coughs> it is actually clearing up now, but it has been pretty horrible last uh, few days. Um, yeah, I completely forgot my sister Vida whose birthday it is today. Happy birthday, Vida. Happy birthday, V. <laughs> um, reminded me that <coughs> the uh, surgeon actually said to me after the operation that because of the gas and all the you know, tubes they stick down your throat and everything, that your lungs are a bit more susceptible to infection. Um, that's part of why you're supposed to take it easy if you haven't had an operation. Um, and I did take it easy. Ish. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> ended up with bronchitis. <coughs> there might be a longer video because we can't stop coughing. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's pretty in the sun, look. Yeah, well, it's Squint. where we usually sit. It's not sunny yet and it's morning and I've got to get on with stuff if I'm making it easy. <laughs> um, got some vlogs to chop. Just a few. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, this video is going to be in two parts. Um, because basically what's over the last two weeks, we, we've done actually quite a bit, um, but I've done wine and racky, and rather than bore people who aren't interested in that sort of thing um, with it, I'm, I've done a, a separate one that will basically just be wine and racky. Um, so that'll be part two of this video. First part, um, it'll just be general sort of um, Sort of showing what what we've been doing um, out in the, out in the garden, and the other thing I've, I'm going to include in this one is um, some costs um, because I've been into Solistra and paid my municipal tax for the house, um, and the tax for both of our vehicles because we pay a municipality. Can you say it? Municipality. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, tax for your vehicles as well um, and then the way it works in Bulgaria is if you don't use your vehicle on a public when they say public road they mean a, a sort of a main road um, then essentially it doesn't have to have an MOT um, and it doesn't have to pay road tax but the moment you go on one of the bigger roads um, and you're caught they clobber you, so you literally only would use it around the village if it didn't have an MOT or, or road tax. So you have to pay municipal mun, municipality tax, <laughs> municipality. <laughs> BG toll, which is the road tax, um, and then the little van, and we had to get a preglet, which is the Bulgarian form of an MOT, done on it. Um, so I'll, I'll go through how much that cost. Um, Vanessa's got to be done. Yeah, Vanessa actually, it's got to be done today, so I'm going to have to run Vanessa in. Um, I might actually include that in this video when I edit it, just to sort of show you where the garage is and, and what, what happens and everything. What else has happened then? Well, you all know we had Cock, she's been our sort of adopted cat here for about five years. He well and truly moved in. Uh, but he brought his son with him, who's probably, I'd say, only about three months. Yeah, about that. Quite small, um, which we've named Clive. Um, she yeah. did call him Fugly. Mm, I changed it to Fugly, so it worked quite. But anyway, <laughs> we've called him Clive. Everyone said we would be mean calling him Fugly. Um, so, yep, we've uh, 
sort of adopted him. He was very hissy, he didn't come near you to begin with. Um, Dex just wants to play with him. Um, he is actually now, we can pick him up. Uh, he likes his food and he's not fussy like his dad, so he'll eat some food. Um, and he's getting better, yeah, so he, really, he does almost play with Dex, which is great for him, but his dad's always lurking around and as soon as Dex wants to play with him, he swipes Dex, so. But yeah, yeah so it's another one, which I said, no more, but. Uh, yeah, the only, the only worry I've got is uh, when we go back to the UK, um, which we'll probably go back for sort of a month or two months here and there, is we'll either take Dexter with us or we'll stay with Adam and Linda, and Codfrey, we know he can look after himself. My only concern is if we've got a kitten here and it gets too domesticated, um, if we're not here, it won't be able to look after itself. And I wouldn't really want to go down the route of having to get people to look after pets and things. So I'm still not convinced it's a good idea. He might not stay. Well, no. Um, oh, the other thing in this this last couple of weeks is some of the frustrations um, that you find um, in Bulgaria are simple silly little things that can take ages and ages to resolve um, for instance I've made a we, we, in our kitchen we've got to move everything around I'm putting a Rayburn in but it's all temporary because I'm planning next year funds permitting and uh, to extend the kitchen. So in the meantime, um, we've got an awful little sink that's in the wrong place. Um, freezer can't reach it properly. It's it's horrible. Yeah, because so Teresa does all the washing up. <laughs> yeah, Teresa has actually got a little dishwasher. But it's for me. <laughs> um, so I've made, there was an old bed frame here. Uh, <laughs> secondly, I've, I've got two uses of bed frame showing in this video. One is I've made a little trailer and the other one is a wooden bed frame and I've used all the wood in it to make a kitchen sink cabinet. Um, we brought some oak door fronts over from the UK so I've used the bed frame to make the cabinet and the oak door frames on. All I really needed was a work surface. Two metre worktop, kitchen worktop. You'd think it'd be straightforward enough. In the UK I could go straight in any small town and get two meters of worktop, no problem whatsoever. In Bulgaria, no. Maybe if you're in a big city like Varna or Schumann or Silistra or somewhere like that, but uh, we're near Silistra. Uh, we went to Silistra. Sorry, I mean, <laughs> I meant Sophia, not Silistra. I was going to say, we've been around Silistra. Silistra <laughs> Silistra's not a big town, and that's where I've been looking, um, and it's been hopeless. I've put message on Facebook, people have given me recommendations of places to try and all the places I've tried, including the ones that were re recommended, um, have all sort of changed their policies. None of them now sell worktop directly. They want you to buy their units with the worktop on them. So you go in and you see all these different worktops and you say, oh, I like that one. Can I have two meters of that? And they look at you as if you're mad and say, no, 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 no. Only if you buy their units. kitchen unit and then you can have that work surface on. So it's a choice of work surface for their unit. They won't sell you it. In the end, I got to the point where I just couldn't, just really couldn't be bothered with trying anymore. I'd spent sort of two days, basically, going back down into Solicitor, going to another couple of places that people had said that you might be able to get them, and I gave up. So I ended up going to Timber Yard. I bought, um, I bought two lengths, two four meter lengths of planking, which is approximately the same sort of side as, size as uh, scaffold board. The only problem is it's fairly green, it's still running, it's running a bit sap. But I'm gonna use that because obviously it'll, it'll probably split and warp a little bit, um, but it'll give, it, it'll give it a nice sort of rustic look and it's, it's only until next year, so that's what I've done. Um, and that's it, I'll, we'll come back to you at the end of the video. So here's yesterday's project. Um, I made a little trailer up, because uh, all I've been using is a little hand cart that holds about uh, three logs. This is, it's basically just an old bedstead, um, or, you know, bed frame. 
um, that I found. I think if it was yours, Nicky, um, when you were a toddler, because it's a child's bed, then I apologise for its reuse, but uh, it's gone to a good home. It's going to be a nice little trailer to tow logs and things behind the old lawnmower. So all I've done, I'll show you how I made it. But I bought some um, angle iron and a couple of wheels, all very cheap. Obviously the bed frame is nothing. The bits of wood that are forming the, the, the front and the back were just um, bits of old wood left behind here. Um, I bought a bit of tube as an axle and a couple of wheels. The wheels were the most expensive thing. They were 59 levs each, basically wheelbarrow wheels. Um, metal came to nine, uh, nine levs and 10 cents. I've left the, I haven't put a base or sides on simply because it's still got quite a good um, sort of sprung steel base on it. And to put sides on, I'd have to cut all these bits of wire off that are holding that. Obviously, at some point when the base rots out, I'll put a little, I'll put a plywood base and sides on it. But for the moment, that's good enough for what I need. Right, <laughs> at the moment. That's my only way of moving logs, and bits and bobs. Oh, haven't even got a wheelbarrow. This is actually a brilliant little thing. It's just a little hand cart. Um, big wheels, so it gets over stuff. But once you put about four logs in there, it all starts to fall off. So, in amongst all the bits and bobs, there's an old bed. It was uh, a child's bed, so uh, I just thought that I'll make a perfect little trail, uh, frame for trailer. So I bought a couple of wheels. They were, oh God, what were they? 59 levs each. Um, they're just like wheelbarrow wheels, little bearings. Two lengths of plywood, uh, two lengths of plywood, two, two lengths of angle iron and a length of tubing which that's a 20 mil or 20 millimeter um, diameter hole. Unfortunately, the bar they have is all the, the smallest, uh, you know, unless they, you go down way below it, um, is two mils bigger. This is the closest I can find. It's quite good solid tube, but that's uh, 19 mil. So there's a little bit of slop, but um, to be honest, I'm only using it around the garden, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and I found a spacers that uh, the little grey plastic tubing you use here um, is spot on size wise you know to, to make up the little gap there so that I'm not running on the rims but on the bearings and then I've just got uh, some washers and uh, um, split pins so Of course, the one thing I completely forgot to get when I went into town was what I was moaning about with uh, the other day. I've got no clamps. I still haven't got any clamps. Bugger. Completely forgot to get some. So I'm just going to have to hold it and hope. Well, I found a 90 degree magnet to hold them, which is fine for this because they don't need to be clamped. Um, the other problem I've got here is some of my tools have still got English plugs and some I've brought over here have got Bulgarian plugs. So until I swap all the plugs over, I have to keep changing things from English to Bulgarian. So I've just got the one <coughs> uh, lead. So the welder is on this. So I've got to unwind it so it doesn't overheat. Plug this into the Bulgarian plug. And then when I want to use the angle grinder, I've got to unplug it, plug the angle grinder into the Bulgarian plug. Pain in the bum, I need to buy a load of plugs.
So there we are. Not the prettiest thing in the world. Um, I've got to put the wheel spaces in yet, and obviously I'm going to I'll paint the new metal work. Being an old bed, it's got a quite a sturdy metal bed frame, you know, the bed spring thing at the moment. So I think I'm just going to leave that for now um, until it rots out, and then I'll put a wood floor in it. I might just put on the two ends here, just put some ply sort of up this way, just so you end up with a so things don't roll off the back and the front, but I shan't worry about the side yet because uh, you've got the wire that's holding the, the bed in. Obviously, if I want to put sides in, I've got to cut all that wire off. Um, and I can't really see the point, to be honest. I'm only going to be using it for moving logs and things. So at the moment, it's ideal like that. Um, it's not very high, but uh, it's going behind a lawnmower that's about the same height. So quite pleased with it really for a cheapie. Another thing I found in the cellar is a load of old uh, preserved peaches. Some of them might be all right but I ain't going to try them. I think they're years old. A lot of them are just dissolved into a mush. So they're going in the compost and then I can use those jars for preserving um, some of our stuff this year. You get those, the lids, there's a little tool that you, they use over in Bulgaria or over here rather. Um, so anyway, the uh, once I've chucked out the contents into the compost, I'm going to clean up the jars, and you can buy the these lids for them over here. All the supermarkets have them, and there's a little tool that crimps them on. Um, so those jars would be good for some of my preserves. Well, I've got to say they were actually pretty manky. <laughs> Definitely wouldn't want to have eaten them. But there's some nice uh, peaches in the compost. And some jars that I can wash out and reuse. Today I'm going to make some um, chilli sauce. I make this every year. It's like, like Tabasco, it's fermented. Um, normally I get all my ingredients here when we come over on holiday. Um, we get all these lovely big bags of chilli peppers, or chilies. Um, tomatoes, bell peppers, all sorts, um, and I take them back to the UK. I quite often use them as packing in the suitcases. Um, but obviously this year we're out here, so I'm making it here. So I've already made, started making it. I'll just show you what goes in. And it's so simple, anybody can make it. So this is just part liquidizer. So in each liquidizer full, I never use exactly the same ingredients. I've, I've, I've never been one to measure things or anything like that. So it's all rough, but it all works. So it'll be one clove of garlic. Try and get the bloody skin off. Scrap that bit down there, it goes in the compost. And just chunk it up. Then the chilies, chop off any bits that aren't very good. Normally I sort of half fill the pot with chilies. seeds and all. You don't want it so hot you can take the seeds out but you can leave your chilli sauce then. That's a um, charred and then um, de-skinned bell pepper. I've done a few earlier so char them, chuck them in a bag like that and the skin sweat off. I put a half of one in each pot. One tomato, one 
one small onion. I'm wearing gloves. <laughs> I don't normally wear gloves, but I've been uh, cutting down. Everybody has a different name for them over here stink trees, angel trees. Um, but there's some, there's two varieties, and one of them's real, real spikes on, and it's a bit like uh, hawthorn in the UK. You spike yourself a few times, and it aches like um, having arthritis in your fingers. And because I've got so many little chips and cuts, cutting up these will sting. So uh, I'm wearing gloves. I don't, I don't normally, and I normally regret it because I end up having an itch on my nose or an eye or something and completely forget and then end up uh, wishing I'd have gloves on. So I've actually got gloves on this time. A tablespoon of salt. Is it it up pretty fine um, that's basically it then you keep putting it in here I've got a lovely big uh, glass jar for doing this in you just keep going until you either run out of ingredients or run out of space it's as simple as that then all you do is uh, cover it in a Something to stop flies going in, muslin or, or uh, just a lid of some sort. Take the lid off once a day, give it a stir. You'll find after two or three days it will start to bubble. And then you every carry on doing the sort of stirring every two or three days. And eventually, after I don't know, maybe a week, ten days, it stops bubbling. You can then um, put it in the fridge in that container or you can put it in little bottles um, put it in the fridge or you don't have to put it in the fridge and it lasts for months and months and months um, and it's basically like Tabasco sauce um, I think the, the actual Tabasco sauce they put in blooming great oak vats and you know sort of ferment it over months but this works perfectly well and it makes a really really nice sauce that's it so this is the fermented, fermented chilli sauce, um, 24 hours later. As you can see, it's bubbling up because the, the actual level was about there. This is all air in here now, so you have to stir it two or three times a day until it settles down, otherwise it will overflow.
clean off anything that's around the lid so it can go mouldy. That's it essentially, you do that two or three times a day and it will slowly ease off and after, depending on the weather, a week, two weeks, it will fizzle down to nothing and you can bottle it, um, just make sure it has finished fermenting otherwise you'll blow your bottles like you would the ginger beer, um, but you'll know because it completely stops bubbling. Then you can bottle it, you don't have to put it in the fridge. Um, when you open it, it's probably better to put it in the fridge, but it will actually last out the fridge. So that's it, don't drop the jug. So it's now actually a day after we film the introduction. In my usual fashion, I'm late. Um, so sorry Vida, it's a day late. To, uh, giving you your birthday wishes. Hope you had a lovely day. So this is just a quick peek at the cabinet that I've made. Um, that was That's just put on there because I'm still sanding at the moment. I want to make sure the doors stay shut. So this is the work surface I've made. It's, it's pretty rough because it's just made out of essentially scaffold board. The guts of the cabinet are um, just an old bed frame wooden bed frame similar to this this thing here just uh, good good solid wood so I'll just use that to make a it's quite rough and ready I'll put some shelves and that in once I put the the sink unit and see where the plumbing's going um, there's nothing special a bit rough but uh, it's a lot better than what we've got at the moment uh, so as promised um, here are some of the costings. Um, I went into Solistra, I don't know, last week in preparation for doing the vans, both the vans, Preglex, uh, which are the MOTs. Um, to be able to do an MOT, you have to have paid your municipal tax. Um, and we know from past experience, you turn up and, and they start doing your MOT and then all of a sudden they'll turn around and say, Oh, that's a problem. You haven't paid your tax. So I wanted to preempt everything. Um, so I went in and paid all our taxes prior to doing the Preglex. It didn't quite work. I'll explain that in a minute. Anyway, so the um, the house tax, which is this one, is it, it basically all you're paying for here with the equivalent of council tax is for there's a street light just at the bottom of our property and you have um, sort of communal bins so you don't have a bin pick up from right outside the gate you have to go up into the village put everything in a big dumpster type thing um, so this is how much it cost it's actually gone up a lot from last time um, I think the first year we only paid um, it was something like 38, which I think we worked out at the time was £17. This year I've actually got four little payments here. So I've got two lots of interest because we're slightly late paying. I think we pay in April or something like that, or May. So the total comes to £88.19 less. But that's including £11, or 11 levs rather, of. Well, they're not interest, it's fines. Um, so 88, if you say roughly half, and a little bit off of that. So, uh, so it's about 40 pounds for the year, which, okay, you don't quite get the services you might in the UK, but who cares? So that's the house municipal taxes. So this is the documents for the little van, which is um, a Vauxhall Combi. So this is the registration documents. You get two, um, big and small. Sometimes they want to see the big one, sometimes just the little one. Then this is the MOT or Preglet, um, which I did last week or a couple of days ago. Um, 
the little van sailed through, no problem. Didn't expect it to. The MOTs here are fairly simple. Essentially, if your lights work, your brakes work, um, and the wheel bearings are okay, you will pass. It's as simple as that, really. Um, so this is the municipal tax for the little van, which is in <laughs> incredibly cheap. It's, it's the, one of the beauties of the little van. Um, is actually only uh, I've paid for both because they give me two two instalments. I've paid both of them. Um, twenty three levs, twenty seven. So that's what tenner, something like that, for the municipal tax, and the VG tax um, or the VG toll tax, which is the road tax. When we were just coming over on visits, I used to pay it a week at a time. And it was 15 lev for a week, um, but I've now you can pay it one week, one month, six months, and, and a year. So, I, so I've paid a year, it's the same for both vans because they're both just under three and a half ton. Um, and that's 97 levs, so about 48 quid. So, tax costs for the vehicles is, is pretty cheap. Insurance has gone up this year. Um, Some, a lot of it is because um, right-hand drive, they, they seem to be getting a lot more snippy over that sort of thing. I mean, it's ridiculous. This is, uh, we've had the little van here now for four years. Um, you don't get no claims bonus here, but I'm not as far as I'm aware. Um, and it's based on the van, not the driver. So there's no brownie points for being a good driver. You just pay for um, the van. Um, and because it's a right-hand drive, the best I could find was 299 levs. Um, so that's about 100 and, 140, 140 quid, something like that, pounds. Um, but it is just sort of like third party here. Um, I think you can get comprehensive, but it's a lot more expensive. And also, I mean, it's, with both of our vans, they're not like new things well the big van's worth quite a few thousand i suppose but uh well anyway that's that's what it costs uh you get a green card with it so you can drive it back to the uk um so that's probably the biggest up bill upwards this year because last year it was just over 200 levs um so it's almost 100 levs more so that's the costs for the for the little van So we've done house, little van, and now the big, big van. Now this one was a bit more of a pain in the bum. I thought I paid the municipal tax for it when I paid for these. It turns out that where I said they do these two instalments, last year I'd only paid for the first instalment. So when I went and paid for these, all I ended up doing was paying for the second instalment for last year. I did say I wanted to pay everything up to date, and I suppose that's what I got up to date. I didn't pay anything in advance. So I turned up yesterday for the MOT. Um, I thought, ah, oh, great, it's going to be nice and quick because there was just a lorry in front of me, and that was halfway through having its credit done. Went to the office, gave them the, the big registration that they want, and my residence card. Oh, good, good. Wait for the Went in, they stuck the probe in the exhaust. Um, I don't think that makes any difference whatsoever as for the emissions, because um, there was an old bus in front of me and that was belching black smoke and that passed. But anyway, I was sat there, so that's, it, that's the second, this is, I'll come to that. Um, so this, this truck had gone through, I'd gone in, they put the probe in, and you wait about five minutes while they go back into the office, check the paperwork, read the emissions test. Came back out, problem. I hadn't paid my taxes. I said, what, what do you mean I hadn't paid my taxes? So I pulled out this bit of paper, same as this, and he looked at it and he said, no, no, that's it. And he pointed to the, to the one here. And apparently all I'd paid was last year's second instalment. So I had to go, they've got an easy pay office now, 
at the MOT station, which they didn't last year. But unlike the cost for the MOT, oh, I didn't come on, the, the MOTs will go 70 nevs each. Um, so probably similar price to, to the UK. I can't remember what it is now, but so it's about 30 something pounds. I think in the UK, it's about 40, something like that. Um, but in the UK, you do get a thorough check. Uh, so you could pay for the MOT with a card. And then I said, well, can I just pay what I owe through EasyPay? They said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got my card out and there, cash only. So I had to go down into Solicitor, get some cash. By the time I got back, there were five vehicles and now I'm at the back of the queue again. Um, no way of cutting it in, that's just the way it works, back of the queue. So when I eventually got in there, it did pass as I expected it to. There was an old bus in front of me, some really old Soviet looking thing, it almost looked like a big four by four sort of bus, belching black smoke. Um, the back lights, you couldn't see them. I mean, one was just like a dimmest, dimmest red. And they made him take the light fitting apart. And the uh, MOT inspector got down and he's looking at it like this. And it's just got a tiny, tiny glow, I guess, because he said, done, and passed it. And I couldn't believe this van was a heap of crap. So I wasn't, I certainly didn't expect mine to fail, and it didn't. So back to the costs. Uh, MOT, like I said, 70 lev. Um, now the municipal tax for the bigger van is quite a bit more. So the two two instalments this this time i've paid them both and that was 157 levs um so that's about sort of 70 something pounds so that's it really the costs um vehicles and house tax is a lot less than the uk um insurance i i haven't i don't have to get insurance again for the big van until may i think when we insured it um that's a, that was a bit more expensive because we went through another company because at the time we were a bit rushed and only do it uh, quickly and that was 400 and something but then it's a you know it's a two and a half ton truck really that's it so that's really the end of this this week's video or this week's week's video like i said there's a second part which will be which is just making wine i'll post that either this evening or tomorrow morning. Um, the next video from this will probably be in another um, 10 to 10 days to two weeks um, when we have a, we, we're actually having um, a mini digger in for three days to do some ground excavation. Um, gonna flatten out this little bit of uh, vineyard and make a nice area out the back to put polytunnel up various other, oh, the, the driveway where we slipped off last year, that's going to be levelled. Um, and whatever other jobs we can fit in within the three days. Uh, it's all, this video has been, it's a bit chaotic. I, I really need to sort of sit down and work out um, timings for things. Uh, my video skills aren't great. They're slowly maybe getting better. Um, but we do need to organise ourselves a bit better. I do. She's bugging me about my glasses again. Um, <coughs> do need to put things in sensible orders. I tend to flit around jobs around the house um, and garden. You know, go from one job, do a bit of that one, back to doing this. So it makes making videos very difficult because you do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I don't film everything. I can't be bothered to film everything but I, I try and film the interesting bits and now I'm waffling so that's it that's it for this week and well no it's not that it for this week <coughs> 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 Apparently I'm waffling, so I'll say goodbye tomorrow, to either this evening or tomorrow, there'll be the second part, which is all, oh for fuck's sake, Fraser. <laughs> <laughs>